All right, guys. So we're, uh, today we're going to talk about getting more buyer agreements signed. Um, that's what the focus is on, right? If you're jumping on this training today, for those of you guys that are watching at home, it's because you want to go out there and get more buyers agreements signed, right? You're setting appointments, you're meeting with buyers, you're introducing the buyer agreement somehow, and you want to just do a better job at converting those to signatures, right? And so we're going to talk about that, guys, just some strategy and kind of break this down. And what I want to do is also make this interactive, right? So I want to do some role play. So I may ask some of you guys to come up here and role play some of this stuff because we're going to break it down into like three different sections, right? So if I call on you, come up here, do a little role play, and there's people watching as well, so they're going to get something out of it also. Um, feel free to stop me, guys, if you have any questions, and we will go from there. So first part, guys, if you guys have been in my trainings before, um, I always like to start off with mindset, right? In order to get more buyer agreements signed, we have to approach everything with the right mindset, right? If we don't have the right mindset, then we're not going to remember what the goal is. We're going to fall off track. Um, we're not going into it with intention, right? So I want us to really break down what the mindset is when we're going into these appointments right if you're meeting a buyer for the first time um what's the angle what's the game plan how are we how are we viewing this whole thing right that's really really important because that's going to determine what steps that you take so first thing i want to talk about is think like a buyer right put yourself in the buyer's shoes if you're going to go meet a buyer however you met the buyer right a lot of us do online leads we got zillow we were booking buyer appointments some of us are doing open houses and we're meeting buyers for the first time um at an open house and maybe we're trying to follow up with them and book an appointment and so you got to think from a buyer's standpoint um what does the buyer want at the end of the day right do they want to go through this whole process of signing agreements and doing all of these things what do they really want guys they want, property. They want, their homes. They want a house right yeah. do buyers want an agent they don't right as much as everyone thinks like Buyers need an agent, they need representation, all that stuff. All that stuff is true. They should be represented and they should be protected. But do but do buyers want an agent like at the end of the day? Or do they only want an agent because that's part of the process that they're told it sh that should happen, right? That's what it is, right? But if it were up to buyers and they could just click a button and then they get the house of their dreams and the loan's done and everything's done, wouldn't they rather do that, right? So we got to think from a standpoint from a buyer, right, is – when the buyer's going into this, um, they don't want an agent necessarily. They need an agent to facilitate the process. They need an agent to open the door. They need an agent to protect their interests, but they don't necessarily want an agent. They want the end result, which is to get the keys to their home and be in their home and have a, a jolly old time, right? So when we understand that, then we can view this process in a different way. We're not going to take offense to when buyers do certain things because we know that it's just human nature, right? Buyers, they want a good deal. They want to pay less. They want a better house for less money, right? It's just human nature, right? It's, it's humans. Like when you go buy a car, we just want to go up there and drive off with the car. We don't want to go through the whole finance. Who's bought a new car before and had to sit through the whole financing part? It takes a long time, right? It's all day. You're there all day. And you're like, I just need a car, right? I'm all day, right? So I want you guys to think like a buyer, right? They don't want an agent. They don't want to go through this process. They just want the house. Um, the next concept here, guys, is that systems and processes always win. And why am I saying that? Because if you're just winging it every single time and you don't have a process that you've developed or that you've practiced and rehearsed and you've dialed down and like, hey, this is how I do it. I do steps one, two, three, four, and five, and I check those off every single time, then you're just winging it, right? We've talked about this before. When you go to McDonald's, they don't just like decide how they're gonna make the Big Mac, right? If you order a Big Mac, there's the exact bun, it goes in the exact temperature, the exact amount of sauce, onions, whatever's on a Big Mac, right? Whoever eats Big Macs. But they're not winging it every single time. They're not coming up with a new recipe every single time, right? It's a tried and true system that they've refined and they, they repeat the process over and over until it gets perfected. And so you have to have a system in place or a process that you follow, because if not, if you're winging it every single time, then you're going to be inconsistent in your results, right? 
Now, does that mean that all situations are going to be equal? No, you're going to, you're dealing with humans, right? Different personalities, different scenarios, weather conditions may be different. You may get there and the key doesn't work to open the house, right, Mark? Like it happened to you. So there's always going to be all these variables, right, that happen, external factors that we can't really control. But what we can control is the order in which we go, the process that we follow, right? The method to our madness. And you have to have something because if you just have that process repeat over and over, you're going to get better and better and better and better every single time. And you're going to come off with more confidence. It's going to come easier. You're going to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And you're going to refine it to a point where you're just converting at a higher level. Right. You guys follow me there. And so, yeah, ask questions. Stop me and ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. So you asked the question, how important is the preparation before we go meet the buyer? The preparation is extremely important. And that's that's part of what I'm going to say on one of these slides. But you jump to it, which is great. In order to have a process, you have to prepare for that process. Like I'll give you an example today. Today, like for me to have this Zoom, you know, Google Meet meeting, I had a process that I follow. I have these slides that I already have. I have a template that I follow, right? I'm not creating brand new slides every time. Like I have a template that I just copy and I have a certain way the bullet points are laid out, a certain way I present it, a certain way that I host it. There's all these different things because I've done this so many times and I know what works and what doesn't work. But if I were just like guessing, you know, every single time, I wouldn't deliver a consistent result in our meetings, right? And those of you guys that have been part of our organization or those of you outside that have seen our meetings, you know, there's consistent value that we're giving because I follow a certain process, right? There's a reason why I even talk about mindset every time. Mindset is something I talk about a lot and that's part of my process and how I teach. I want you to understand why we're doing something before I tell you what to do. That's a process, right? That's a system. Um, our buyer presentation, right? We've been using a buyer presentation for probably close to 10 years now, and it hasn't changed much. It's evolved a little bit, but once we, you know, created the buyer presentation and we got it down to kind of the foundation, it, it's evolved a little bit over time and some things have been updated, but it's pretty much the same process over and over and over, right? And that's why our team has closed, you know, probably a thousand transactions in the last 10 years, right? Because of that process that we follow, it creates consistency, right? And so I'm drilling this guys because um, there was a stat, what was the stat guys of how many agents do not have a buyer presentation? 87% of agents do not have a buyer, a formal buyer presentation, right? Think about that. That means they're winging it, right? Or maybe they have an idea in their mind of what they're supposed to do, but they're not following like a process step by step by step, right? Um, okay. The next thing right here, guys, is you won't convert everyone. And I'm going to read something that I thought was really cool that Daniel Beer, if those of you guys who know who Daniel Beer is, he's our upline at EXP. He's a genius freaking operator, genius marketer. Like it's, it's one of the top teams uh, in, based in San Diego, um, has over like 12,000 agents under him in our upline in, in EXP. He's just a really, really smart guy. Uh, and he's built a tremendous business. He's a really good coach. But what he wrote on one of his emails that he sent out um, is talking about buyer agreements. And the title of the email was your buyers didn't want to sign your buyer's agreement with you, right? And then he went into, on to explain. And he said, now let me ask you this. Did you convert 100% of your buyer pipeline in the past? Think about that. When you guys were meeting buyers before, did you convert 100% of them? No. Oh yeah, me neither. That's what he wrote, right? Um, but you did have to commit loads of time to them also you can sort out who is who, yeah. right? So in the past, before this, this process, we just go meet with the buyer. We'd spend a bunch of time to figure out if they were going to work with us or not, right? We didn't convert them all. The time, that time cost you money. Now, let's just say you typically convert three out of every 10 buyers you work with to an actual closing, but you had to give energy to all 10 of them, right? Um, so now be happy when three, for example, of your 10 refuse to sign. Be happy when they don't want to sign, right? because now you know who to focus on. If you go meet with the buyer and they don't wanna sign, well, I know that's not my guy. I know I gotta focus on the other ones who do wanna sign, right? So this process is actually eliminating people, right? Um, and so now seven get 100% of your energy. And then the result is maybe you end up converting five of them to an escrow, what a blessing, 
right? So dry those tears, find the positives, decide you're a pro. I like that he wrote that. Decide that you're a professional, right? Or get out of the way is what he wrote. <laughs> It was a powerful message, right? I'm reading it. I'm like, dude, like it's it's so true, right? Like we didn't convert 100% of anybody anyways, right? So don't complain when someone doesn't want to sign. Like be happy that they didn't want to sign. So now, you know, I don't have to focus on them and I can go focus on this other one who did sign with me and who is committed to meeting with me and who wants to go through this process with me, right? It also ties into mindset. Yep. It's the mindset. It's how are you viewing this, right? How are you viewing this? And I encourage you guys to find the positives, like he said, and decide that you're a professional, right? Decide that I'm in this industry. I'm a professional. <clears throat> some will, some won't. I got to focus on the ones who will, right? And if I don't have enough of those ones who will, I got to keep going. I got to keep going, right? I got to keep finding them. Let me see. He was asking me to add somebody. Um, okay. So... <clears throat> You're not going to convert everyone. We heard uh, Dan say that really well. Um, and it's a process of elimination, right? So just reminding everybody that this is a process of elimination. You go out and meet people. You shoot your shot. You present. You try to give value. Some of them are going to be on board. Some of them are not. You're trying to get rid of the ones that aren't a good fit for you, right? That aren't willing to commit to a process. And so I would highly, highly encourage you, do not try to bend your rules to win over, win over a client, all right? Because sometimes we find ourselves in those traps, right? Where I want to win this guy over. So let me figure out if there's a way I can maybe be creative and go around the process that works. And let me bend the rules for this one. I heard somebody say, well, let me just show them the property without signing an agreement. You know, who's going to know, <laughs> right? Like, and I'm like, why would you do that? Is that how you want to build your business? You want to build your business on these little shortcuts and like, finding little loopholes and ways out of it, that's not a sustainable long-term plan to really scale a business, right? Um, but trust me, guys, there's agents out there who are always going to look for shortcuts, right? So we don't want to do that. We just want to go through this process of elimination. Um, any questions on this first part, guys? Have we drilled in the mindset, right? We're looking at this a different way. Excellent. Okay, next slide here. Okay, so setting the appointment. So we're going we're gonna to talk into a little bit of strategy right now to set the appointment. So when we're setting the appointment, guys, this is might sound like, you know, dumb, but your goal is to set the appointment, right? Get face to face. Get face to face. That's the goal. So when you're calling someone on the phone, like if we got an online lead coming in from Zillow, or if it's a buyer that we met at an open house, your goal is to set an appointment to get face to face. Your goal is not to convert them over the phone. They're not going to buy a house over the phone. They're not going to sign something over the phone. They're not going to make a huge, huge financial decision over the phone. So why are we even trying to go down that path? And I see it happen a lot of times where agents will try to over um, qualify the person on the initial appointment, right? Or the initial call. They'll try to ask too many questions. They make it difficult for the client to meet with them, right? They create more hurdles. And so we want to keep it very, very simple. And just remember that our goal is to set the appointment. We can always cancel the appointment. But the first thing I should do, like if a buyer wants to see a house, is great. When can you go out there and see it? That's step one. Like I'm not going to ask, are you pre-qualified? Are you working with an agent? Are you doing all of this? Where are you looking? All these different things. When are you looking to buy? What's your timeline? All those things. Like those things can come later. But my goal is to just set the appointment. So like, Stick to that script, right? Like just book the appointment. Hey, all right, you want to go see one through one, two, three Main Street? Great. When do you want to see it? How does today or tomorrow work? What's a good time? All right. So let's not like as simple as that sounds, guys. People make that mistake all the time, and right? We've, seen it, we've heard it on the recording, right? We've, I mean, it's these are you know case studies where we've heard recording yeah. people overqualify. Yeah, we hear it all the time, guys. We we're a Zillow Flex team, so we get a lot of these calls coming in where people want to see a home and the calls are recorded so we get to go back and listen to the calls and we use that for training right and we hear it a lot of times guys where agents like they just skip that step of just setting the appointment they like try to set it later in the conversation when i'm like no your goal is just to book that appointment give them what they want right and so it goes back to following the script and when you're developing your script um less is more 
on that initial call, right? Because the first step is to set the appointment. So I want to say less. I want to secure that appointment and I want to get in front of them. Because in front of them, where do we have a higher likelihood of converting someone to a client? Over the phone or in front of them? In front of them, right? Because like they can't hang up on you when they're in front of you, right? <laughs> they can't just run. They're not just going to turn around and run away. No, I don't want to work with you and run away, right? That's not the way it works. You, If they're meeting you in person, that shows some level of commitment that they got in their car and they showed up to the place where they have to meet you at, right? So you got to stick to that, right? Um, the script that we use, like I'm going to use Zillow Flex for an example, is the ALM, right? And it's very simple. A is appointment. You book the appointment first. Then you talk about L, which is location. So is this the location you're looking in? Are you open to any other locations? And then M is the motivation, right? Hey, what sparked your interest in this property? What do you like about this property? Is there anything else you're looking for in the property? Very simple, right? And that call in the in initial call should only be two minutes, if that. Unless the client starts asking a bunch of questions, but even then when they start asking a bunch of questions on the phone, what should you do? Yeah, so when they ask a bunch of questions on the phone, so acknowledge, right? Great uh, answer, Antonio and Shri. Acknowledge it, but say, hey, that's a great question. When we meet in person, we're going to go ahead and discuss all of that. Because if you start going down this path and this rabbit hole and you start answering all these questions and then, you know, they get a wrong answer or a wrong feeling from you or you said something that really didn't click in their head or they didn't understand what it meant. Now you're creating an opportunity for them to go, OK, let's not meet. Let's not do that appointment. Right. You know, and then they start deciding in their mind whether they want to move forward or not, which we don't even know if this is the house that they're going to want. We don't even know if they qualify. We don't even know if we're a good fit to work together. So why even create that obstacle for yourself by kind of going down that rabbit hole? Now, as a professional and someone who's giving service, you're going to want to acknowledge, hey, that's a great question. Hey, you know, uh, you know, what's this house going to sell for? It's a great question. I'll do some research. And when we meet, I'll have some comps and some data ready for you. And now what I did is I created actually more value, more reason they're going to want to meet with me, right? And so remember, this is a strategy. This is a, right? Like, the other option is we could just try to answer all their questions, but is that going to work more in our favor or less in our favor, right? Less, because it might lead us to go down a path that is going to lead to them not wanting to meet with us, right? So part of you signing more buyer agreements, as very simple, is going on more appointments because it's a numbers game, right? If I meet with 10 people because I follow this strategy, out of those 10, there will be a certain percentage that actually want to work with me and want to sign and want to move forward. If I only meet with five of them because I had the wrong strategy on my initial call, then I just cut my chances in half, right? And so you see, like, by you keeping it simpler and you just setting the appointment and focusing on that, you're going to create more opportunities for you to go shoot your shot, right? And more opportunities means more potential signed clients, more potential signed clients is more potential deals and contracts. You guys follow me there? Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions um, from the audience? Anybody out there watching online right now? We got a few people. Feel free to type your questions in the chat. Um, or if you guys have any questions, you can unmute yourself and just uh, ask away. Hey, Keeks, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Heidel, what's up, brother? Talk what's to up? me. Hey, real quick, I got a quick question. You know, we were all kind of used to the, the the LP mama, and I did see the the ALM strategy people are using now. As far as you know, I haven't I haven't done that strategy yet, booking appointments and stuff. But uh, as far as like uh, qualified appointments, you know, it, it, what is your guys's kind of um, results, right? Because you know, the the LP mama structure before was like, okay, trying to see if they're, they're pre-approved blah, 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 if they have an agent and stuff like that. Basically, my question is, like, is there a lot of, like, time wasters or people that aren't going to qualify for something, you know, uh, that you guys are, are kind of dealing with? Yeah, that's a great question. So the question is, basically, are we going to be wasting our time, right, if we're not asking a lot of these pre-qualifying questions over the, over the phone on your initial one? Um, and the answer is, yeah, you're going to waste some time on some of them. Right. Um, but then the question that I asked back, like Heido, is like, if you ho host an open house, is everybody that walks into that open house going to want to work with you 
and going to be a client. Are there they are there days when you host an open house and you spent four hours there and you didn't get one lead, right? Are there days when you prospect on the phone for two or three hours and you didn't book any appointments? Absolutely, right? So it's part of the game. So what I would say to you, Heido, is yes, it's the nature of our business when you're in sales that you're going to waste time on people that may or may not uh, be ready to work with you or even be able to work with you because they're not qualified. But if you think about it in, a, in the long run, and we know it's a numbers game, the more people you meet with, the more likely you're going to find that person that is able to meet with you, is able to work together, is able to qualify. And here's the other flip side, right? Let's say you go meet someone and you follow your process and you give really good service and it ends up being that they don't qualify. Well, what was that experience like for that client? Right? If you did a great job, it's a great experience for them, right? You still service them. You took them, you show them the property. You maybe pointed them in the right direction. You maybe hooked them up with your lender. You maybe did a buyer consultation with them. You educated them in the process. And then so at the end, they're going to be extremely grateful to you. And maybe they're not ready to buy right now. Maybe they got to save up a little more money for their down payment. But come six months from now, that's your client. That's your next deal in six months. Or that's your, your next deal in, in a year. Or what I've seen is that maybe they don't end up buying a home, but now they know you're a great agent and they are now an advocate for your services and your business. And they go refer you to another client, right? You had something, Mouty? Yeah, I just want to add on. Uh, treat everyone like they are qualified. Yeah. And then in the conversation, as you get further down, you start finding out that they are or not. But again, like you said, give the service. Um, this happens to me a lot where they're not qualified, they're not ready. But hey, my cousin wants to buy. It. Talk to him. Yep. There you go. Right. So um, Mauricio said, treat everybody as if they are qualified. Give them the service. Decide that. Remember, decide I'm a pro. Decide that this is the way I'm going to conduct my business. Right. I'm 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 someone that just gives value. I give value, and if there's an opportunity, I grab the opportunity. If there's not, at least I left these people better than when they showed up, and I know that's going to pay me in the long run, right? I'll give you an example, guys. Like, you guys know, like, we are we have a team, right? We want agents to join our team all the time, um, but I give so much free information to agents who are not even part of our organization. A lot of you guys here, right, you guys are part of different organizations, but you're on this call, and I'm giving you free information. Why am I doing that, guys? Why do you think I do that? Yeah, I'm giving value. And I decided that I'm a leader in this space. I decided that I'm a leader. I'm a professional. I give value whether you join me, whether you don't join me, whether you're just brand new, you don't have your license yet, whether you're seasoned, whatever it might be. I decided that this is how I run my business. This is my business philosophy. And if I do that enough times, I look back in the last 20 years, guess, guess what has happened? Business is treated as very, very good because we just do right by people. We give good information. We give good value. We treat people no matter if they're qualified, not qualified, candidates or not candidates. That news travels, guys, and that gets out there. Um, Steve, you had a question, Steve. No, I just wanted to kind of chime in on what Tahiro was asking. Look, at from a lender's perspective, it's always good to meet with every single client. Because where you're going to bring that value, especially from a lender, is you're going to show them what they're going to need to do, regardless if they can buy now, six months from now, or even a year. You might even give them ideas that they would never have a thought about before because you have a lender that understands the market and they can give them guidance on what they need to do in order to qualify. So there's never a bad client. It's only a bad agent for not educating them the right way. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's good, right? Because it's with a lot of clients trying to buy, let's just right, and especially here in the Bay Area, prices are high, right? Not a lot of people can qualify. Some people have credit issues they gotta fix. Some people have to save up a little bit more for down payment. Some people can't qualify because the rates are a little high, but if they do drop now, they qualify. So are we not gonna meet with that person because maybe it's it's not right right now? You're setting up yourself for that future for the future business, right? And we're we're creating a pipeline. So we have to be in that pipeline mentality, right? Yeah, three, six months, and then you add them to like a nurture, right? So uh, yeah, great observation, Heidel. Shift from LP Mama, go to ALM, get in front of them. In front of them, you know, you can ask all the questions and build that rapport. And let's say, um, let's say like, I'm gonna give you a scenario. Let's say you go meet them and they just can't, there's no way they're gonna qualify. They can't buy anything like that, but you have a really good experience. I would ask for a referral. I would ask for a review. review. 
hey, you know, hey, John Smith, right? Hey, I know like you maybe, you know, it's not the right time for you to buy. Um, I want to make sure, right? Hopefully like, you got some good information. Would you be so kind to leave me a review online if you thought my service was good, right? John is going to want to leave you a review if you treated him right. And then what does that review do for you? It helps you go get more clients. Yeah. When you go on that next listing appointment or that next buyer appointment and you show those reviews, that helps you seal the deal, right? And you're in momentum, guys, right? Like you don't ever want to go weeks where you don't have no appointments. Like just you want to be out there getting in front of people, right? And that keeps you sharp and it keeps you in momentum. Um, okay, so eliminate the hurdles, guys, um, right? That kind of leads into that, eliminating the hurdles and get in front of them. All right, next slide. Great stuff, guys. Great questions. Okay, so introducing the agreement. So this is a strategy, right? This is the strategy that I think is, is a good strategy. So let's say the scenario is someone wants to go see a property, right? They called you from your sign. Maybe you met them at an open house. Maybe it's a Zillow call. Maybe it's an online lead or maybe it's a referral, right? A lot of times buyers, when they hit you up, so however they hit you up, they have properties in mind that they want to go see, right? So you book the appointment. Hey, you did the ALM. Hey, let's book the appointment. I asked a couple questions about location, motivation, and great. I'm going to go ahead and confirm this appointment for us. So I always tell them on that first call, hey, let me check with the seller, make sure I can get you in at this time, and I'll give you a call back in a little bit, right, to go ahead and confirm that we're good for tomorrow at 6 p.m. or whatever it might be. That's step one. We sealed the, we secured the appointment, and we set the tone that, hey, I'm going to call you back to confirm. Now, when I call them back to confirm, this is when I want to introduce the buyer-broker agreement, right? Because we all know with these new rules that you got to get these agreements signed before you go out and tour property, right? And you also know if they sign an agreement with somebody else, well, then you can't really go out and work that client if they're already in a contract with someone else, especially if it's an exclusive agreement, right? And so this strategy right here is going to help you weed some of those people out, and it's going to help introduce the agreement in a strategic way that's not going to scare them off, right? So let's talk about that. Um, so when I call back to confirm the appointment, right, I'm going to role play this. I'll role play this with, uh, with Mark. Yeah. Okay. Mark, come up, come up here. There we go. Thanks, Mark. Mark, you're my assistant today. Um, okay. So I got Mark right here. If you guys can see Mark. I'm gonna this out of the way. Okay. So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Mark. Hello. Hey, Mark. Yeah, who's this? Hey, it's Enrique. Uh, we just spoke a little while ago about 123 Main Street. Oh, thanks for calling back. Hey, no problem. Hey, I'm calling back because I want to just confirm I was able to secure that appointment for us. And I'm excited to meet you tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. at the property on 123 Main Street. That time still works, right? Yeah, 12 works. Thank okay, you. perfect, perfect. And what I did also is I pulled up a couple other properties that are similar to this one. So if you have a little extra time, uh, we can go check those out too. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. Sound fair? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, great. Um, now, before I let you go, and this is pause role play, this is where I'm going to introduce the buyer agreement, right? Hey, really quick, before I let you go, has anybody taken the time to explain like some of the new rules and changes when working between a buyer and a buyer agent? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, okay. A lot of people aren't. And so I'll just give you the quick rundown. I'll keep it very, very simple. So as of August 17th, uh, before we go out and tour a property, um, when you go out with an agent, you have to sign a touring agreement, basically an agreement just saying that I'm going to be showing you that property. And then I do have to disclose like how our compensation works and all that stuff. And so those are the new changes in the past. Like you just go to a house and look at it and there was no, no uh, agreement needed to be signed. But now we'll go ahead and just uh, take care of that um, to get you into the property. So what I'll do is once we meet tomorrow, um, I'll go ahead and just kind of go over everything before we go into the property and make sure you're comfortable with it. Sound good? Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so we'll end right there. Let's give it up for Mark, guys. <laughs> you didn't give me an objection, right? He made it easy, but he might have made it easy because I made it easy for him to make it easy, right? <laughs> so what I want to point out right there, that was an example, right? And it was kind of on the fly, right? And you can practice that and refine it. But I'm calling to confirm that appointment. That's the first thing, right? Because he already we already talked one time, and I want to be excited. Hey, I'm excited to meet with you. Hey, I was able to lock that appointment. And I also want to let him know that I have a few more properties that we can look at if he has some time, right? What you don't want to do is you don't want to ask if they have time, right? So this is where we're going to go into a little bit of technique. Don't ever ask for permission for certain things. Tell them the way it's going to go. And then they'll let you know if it doesn't work out for them. So I'll give you an example. There's a difference between saying, hey, do you have some time to look at a few more properties tomorrow after this one? That's one way of doing it. 
But then what I do is I get him starting to now think, well, what do I have to do after that? Do I have time? Do I have all these things? Instead of me saying, hey, I pulled up a couple more properties, I'll show them to you. And if you have some time, we can take a look at them. So one of them is me leading him to where what's going to happen. The other one is like asking for permission. And remember, this is sales technique, right? When you're asking for permission, you give them an opportunity to say yes or no versus just saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And then tomorrow we'll see if it, if it makes sense for you, if it works out for you, right? Any questions on that, guys? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the call was going great. Yeah. As soon as you started about the, talking about the agreement, yeah. the commitments and commissions, yeah. what if the buyer wants more time or then he starts thinking, hey, am I locked with this agent because you are not met the buyer? Yeah. And it may go either way, right? The buyer may not like you, may not like the buyer, whatever. Mm -hmm. So how to deal with that situation when the buyer says, hey, no, I, I'm not comfortable signing the agreement or can you send me the agreement ahead of time? I want to read through it or things like that. Yeah. Great question, right? So the question was, what if when I talk about the agreement, the buyer starts bringing it up, right? Starts, hey, well, what's the agreement about? You know, can I look at it? Can you send it to me? That is a possibility and it does happen, right? And so you got to decide right there, are you going to make it a big deal or are you going to maybe defer it to in-person? I always think you should try to defer that to in-person, right? Just like I said earlier, hey, that's a great question. A lot of clients have these questions, but the great thing is tomorrow when we meet, I'll be able to kind of go with over all those options with you. Um, and if everything's good, then we'll go ahead and tour the property. Sound fair, right? And usually if you do that, guys, like eight times out of 10, it's going to be okay. Are you going to have those certain clients that are like, no, I want to see exactly what I'm signing. Send it to me right now. Read it for me. You know, give me some time to review. Yes, you are, right? But that's where you have to have some tools in your belt, right? And so it's going to go to this is going to be a little bit further that we're going to talk about, but we got to remember at the end of the day, what is the security that you can give to that client? What's the guarantee or security or what's something that you can say that is going to put them at ease when it comes to signing some of these agreements? Maori. Yeah. So what Maori said is, Hey, if Mr. Client, if you're not happy with it, you're not okay. You know, we're not locking you into anything. You can cancel right and so that's what's called risk reversal right so there's different forms of agreements that we have and you can decide if you want to go over this on the initial call which i probably wouldn't right unless they absolutely press you but remember there's different types of agreements there's a single property agreement where you can say hey what we could do is just sign an agreement for this uh property you know we'll tour it together and at the end of it if you want to continue to work with me you can if not then you know you don't owe me anything you're free to cancel sound fair right and so remember, when someone gives you an objection, you don't want to fight them on the objection. You want to do something called following their logic, right? So like what you said, if the client says, well, I don't know if I want to sign this agreement, agree with him. Hey, I totally understand, right? If I was you, I probably wouldn't want to know if I to sign an agreement or not either, right? But what we'll do is we'll go over everything together and then I'll give you a couple options. And if it makes sense, then we can move forward. Is that fair, right? And so what you're seeing there, guys, is I'm acknowledging i'm understanding him i'm agreeing with him i'm not making him wrong right. no there's no conflict i'm not butting heads well hey this is the way it's done you have to do this it's the law right like <laughs> right like then what you do is you push them away right but trust me guys i hear agents doing that <laughs> right instead instead you're you're saying hey i understand i agree with you and this is why we're going to meet and this is why we're going to go over everything and if it makes sense, we're good. If it doesn't make sense, no worries, no problem. Is that, and then what I do at the end is I do what's called a tie down is I say, is that fair, right? I want everybody to use that in their arsenal. Now the words, is that fair? Why do I say, is that fair? What's the, what do you think is the strategy or psychology behind is that fair? <laughs> Yeah, so Maori got it, right? Maori's Maori's Maori uses this. I hear him use it and, and he's he's definitely learned this and incorporated this into his process. You could say fair enough, fair enough works, right? Is that fair? Right? Does that make sense? Right. But what you're doing when you say that when you pose the question, is that fair? Or is that fair enough? Nobody wants to not be a fair person, right? And so what you're saying is, hey, we'll go over that. And if you like it, we're good. If you don't, is that fair for you? If I right you're you're questioning kind of like it, it questions their integrity if they say no that's not fair 
then they're going to be an unfair person, right? And nobody wants to be an unfair person, right? And the opportunity to still decide. Yep. There's still somewhat in control. There's still options. feeling like, okay, I'm not tapping. I still have an option. Yep. You're letting them still decide what I want to do. Yeah. Blanca said you're still giving them control. You're still letting them decide. You're still giving them a way out, right? You're not being unreasonable, right? Mm -hmm. Anything like that. And so what it does is it lowers their guard, right? Because you got to remember, sometimes people will react in a certain way just because that's like automatic. It's human nature, right? It's like you say something, oh, wait, wait, wait. And then they just kind of put their guard up, not even knowing why they do that. They just, they just do it, right? And so by you like saying, hey, not a problem. I understand all that stuff. You're getting them to put their guard down, right? Have you ever, um, let me ask you this. Have you guys ever went to the shoe store or the clothing store? And what happens when the guy comes up and asks you if you need help? What do you? What do 99% of the people say? Oh, okay. No, I'm okay. I'm just looking. So you're at, you're at shoe palace, right? Shout out to shoe palace. Uh, you're out there, you're walking in and the guy comes up to you. Hey man, you know, you need a size on those shoes. Oh no, I'm okay. I'm just looking. And then what happens is like 10 minutes later, you're at the counter buying two pairs of shoes, right? Because the, Hey, I'm just looking. That's the knee jerk. That's the automatic response. It's the auto response, right? Hey, I'm just looking. Right. And so, but once you see the shoes you like, then you come back to him, you go, Hey, do you have these in a size 10? Right. And then like, Hey, I thought you were just looking, you weren't trying to buy anything. Right. But it's, it's human nature guys that we do that. So what I'm teaching you guys here today is just understand how humans work, understand how the brain works, understand how human psychology. Um, so when you say things like fair enough, or is that fair or Hey, like, don't worry, I understand. Right. You're just, you're playing off of how the human brain works. Right. And that allows you to move forward to the next step. Um, and then, like I said, as you're educating them, right? When I let in, hey, has anybody taken the time to, to, you know, talk to you about the new changes? I kept it very simple. I even said the words, hey, let me just keep it very simple, right? Brief. Because we don't remember on the phone. We don't want to go into this long thing. We don't want to say the words lawsuit. Who still, have you heard someone talking about the lawsuit? Okay, I'm just whoever's watching this, guys, do not say the words lawsuit, right? What's the knee jerk reaction when you say the words lawsuit? Wait a minute, <laughs> lawsuit, what do you mean, right? Do I gotta call my lawyer, <laughs> right? Like stuff like that. You gotta, um, you gotta not make it a big deal. And that leads to that point there, right? If you keep it really lighthearted and hey, we'll talk about this at the property, hey, this is just a new process, we gotta follow, blah, 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 not a big deal. Hey, when I get there, I'll explain it all to you and we'll see if it makes sense. Is that fair? Right? When you usually do that and people are like, oh yeah, that's fair. Right? That's, that's most of the time they do that. Right? But it's when you start like introducing these words and Hey, there's this, you have to sign a contract with me. The words contract is a triggering thing. Like, wait, contract. I don't sign contracts. Right? Um, Hey, the lawsuit, did you guys hear about the lawsuit? Right? Wait, what do you mean lawsuit? Should I go start researching it now? Right? Like all these things start to pop into their head because you now created these extra images in their head, right? And so we want to get away from doing that by just keeping it very, very simple and not making it a big deal. Um, the last thing I wrote here is don't assume anything. And I think this is the part where we get in trouble. Us as real estate professionals, we know what's going on because we follow the news, because we have to do these trainings, because we pay attention. Your broker is talking about it. You're on trainings like this. But you have to remember that most consumers out there have no clue what's going on. And so a lot of times we're assuming like that they already know how it works and they already don't want to pay you commission and they're already going to negotiate with you and they already don't want to sign anything, right? And we assume that like people know that. I guarantee you go talk to 10 different buyers, like eight of them are probably going to say, oh no, I don't really know how it works. Or yeah, I saw something on the news, but I don't really fully understand it. That's the majority of the people right now, guys. Right. And so why is that in your favor? That's where you get value. Yeah. So it's in your favor that a lot of people don't know how it works because now you get to be the person educating them. You get to be the person giving that value to them. You get to be the person leading the conversation and leading the process, right? Versus like six months from now, or a year from now, when everybody 
and even then not everybody is going to understand because not everybody is buying every single day right like new buyers come into the market every single day somebody turns 38 years old and gets a raise and decides they want to buy a house every single day right but like last year they weren't paying attention to that because they weren't buying a house so what you got to understand is that as time goes on will more people be educated on this will it become more of a norm absolutely but then there's also those people who are just still becoming first-time buyers every single day so even then if it's the norm they still don't know how it works right think about like the before this process before this process with these agreements when someone wanted to buy a house a lot of people still didn't know like what you needed to do to buy a house but buying a house has been around for a long time getting pre-approved has been around for a long time but not everybody still knew about it right so let's not assume that like you're already going to run into these objections people are already going to not want to work with you let's not assume people are hesitant to sign stuff because what do we do when we start assuming all of those things what are we doing to our mentality when we do that we're creating hurdles for ourselves, right like mauricio said we're we're putting things in our mind right when like if i go into um i know mike aguilera is on here this is one of the things he taught us in nlp shout out to mike is he said you need to assume that everybody wants to work with you because when you assume that they want to work with you and when you assume that it's going to be a good interaction and it's going to be in a good meeting you're already kind of like programming yourself to show up in a different way right now if i'm going to show up to a battle and i know it's going to be a battle am i on guard but if I show up and I'm like, yeah, this guy's going to want, if I'm telling myself, yeah, he's going to want to meet with me. I know I'm a great agent. I know I bring value. Everybody wants to work with me. What's my, what's my demeanor now when I show up to that interaction? Cool, relaxed, I'm calm, confident, right? Do I want to show up on guard and ready to fight? Or do I want to show up like nice and cool, nice and easy, right? Let's make this a fun time. Let's look at this property. Let's, let's have a good time while we're doing this, right? And so remember, like when you start assuming stuff that affects how you show up in that interaction right there okay any questions guys we got one more slide all right now we're gonna go signing with confidence so now let's assume we did steps one we set the appointment step two we called them back we confirmed we introduced the agreement right we made it not a big deal. We deferred everything to meeting in person, right? Half the battle is already done, guys. You already went through all of that, and now you're in person, and you follow that process, right? You're not, like, just blindsiding them with, like, this agreement that they have to sign, that they had no clue, right? Because I've seen that also not play out so well. Who's experienced that where, like, they had no clue they had to sign something? And then you go to that appointment, and now they're, like, surprised, or they're offended that you didn't tell them, right? Um, I know that's happened to some people as we've done gotten feedback, but let's assume like they already know there's gonna be something we're gonna talk about. You're excited, you got the properties, right? You made it not a big deal. Like the experience so far has been great. Now you're meeting them in person. Now you wanna get them to sign with confidence. And so you always wanna present that in person, right? And so whether, depending on what the scenario is, whether you book the showing and now you're meeting them at the property, that's in person or whether you set up a Zoom consultation and now you're meeting them face-to-face -face through Zoom, you wanna present that in person. I wouldn't really, really refrain from like trying to like, hey, let's go over this agreement over the phone, right? Um, because on Zoom, they're probably not just gonna hang up on the Zoom, right? And in person, they're not gonna run away. We already talked about that. Um, you talked about preparation earlier. You asked me something about how important is it to be prepared? That's where this comes in, right? So when I show up to this meeting to meet them, I have to be prepared, right? I have to come with value that I'm gonna give to them because the more value that they're gonna get from me, from them moving forward with me and signing this agreement and touring this property, the less likely that they're gonna not want to sign, right? And so this is where like, I've taken the time before I got on showings to prepare my, my buyer packet. I've done my research on the property. I've printed out comps. I've looked over the disclosures. I have, you know, my marketing material, my business card, inspection reports, whatever, like, you know, all those important things about this property, maybe market data, neighborhood data, things like that. I have all this information that I can go over with them because when I'm going to meet them, I want to show them, hey, look what I prepared for you, right? Look at what you're going to get when we 
move to the next step in this process. And so, and it also gives you a lot of ammunition of things that you can talk about, which is going to give more value to the client. If I just show up to that appointment and like I booked it 15 minutes from now, I just show up and like I'm in a rush and I'm sweating a little bit because it's hot outside and I don't have anything printed out. And all I did was, you know, look on the MLS real quick. Like how much value am I going to be able to bring to the table? Very, very little. You wouldn't do that for a listing appointment, right? And um, I like that you brought that up because we want to treat these buyer showings as if it's a listing appointment, right? A lot of us put like listing appointments on a pedestal, right? Everyone wants listings. Everyone wants to sign listings. That's what they teach you in Mike Ferry, all those different things. Great, right? Get listings. But we put so much emphasis on preparing for a listing appointment, right? Like I got to make sure I'm dressed, I'm suited. My, all these different things. I ran the comps. I got my marketing material. I got my iPad. I got the video thing that I'm going to show them. All these different things. But then we don't treat the buyer appointments that way. And last time I checked, like 3% commission is the same on a listing. It, it's the same amount of green money that comes out, right? At three Or it gets wired to your bank account. If you get 3% as a listing agent or as a buyer agent, it's, it's all going to the pot, right? So the way we handle a listing presentation is the same way we should be handling our buyer presentations because now with this new process, essentially we are signing buyers as like we're listing buyers. That's the term that we're using, right? So you got to do your homework. You got to bring your A game because if you don't and they don't decide to sign with you and they come and meet someone like me and I did my all my homework, I'm taking that client, guys, right? or someone else on our team that's really been preparing for this because we've been working on this a lot, they're going to win that client over, right? Or another agent, another great agent at another brokerage that's, you know, understands this and has the track record, they're getting that client, right? And so you got to show them that you're prepared. Um, I also want you to keep it simple. So let's say like you walk up to the property. Actually, let me flip that, right? Being prepared is you should have already been at the property they should be walking up to you, right? Like the client shouldn't be at the property, at the front door, waiting for you, and then you're walking up. You already are at a disadvantage, right? Because you weren't able to kind of set the stage. If the client is already there before you and they're standing at the front door and you're walking up, what are they expecting to happen next, right? They're expecting you to like bust the key out and open the door and let them in. Now, let's turn that around. You showed up early, right? You're standing there, right? Waiting for them with your suit, whatever, however you're dressed, right? You're all prepared, you got your packet, you've done your homework, right? And you're standing in the driveway and now they're walking up to you. Who's in control at that point? You are. You're in control because you're, you're like, they're coming to your environment, right? You're not meeting them at the property. They're meeting you at the property. And now you get to kind of set the stage of what happens next, right? Instead of them just already assuming, okay, he's going to open the door now, right? And so that little thing right there, guys, does make a difference. Um, because I've uh, we've talked about this, right? Where client was already at the door, fumbling, we show up, you know, and they're expecting you to open the door. And then you're like, wait, you got to sign this agreement first. And then they're like, well, what do you mean, right? Like, I thought you were opening the door. We're already here, right? And then now you're that creates that conflict. And so being, that's part of being prepared, guys. Keep it simple. And so when the client comes up to me, I'm going to be excited again. I'm going to say, hey, thanks for coming out, guys. Um, hey, I prepared a bunch of information. So I'm actually holding the packet, and I'm going to visually open the packet. Hey, I prepared a bunch of information, guys, that we're going to go over once we tour the property. I got a lot of information on uh, the inspections, the reports, some of the comps, what this home could potentially sell for, some of the important things you're going to want to look out for when we go into this property. And so I'm happy to share this with you guys. So I already set the stage that you're going to get something really, really cool when we start working together, right? That's strategy, right? And now I'm going to go ahead and remind them of the agreement. Hey guys, remember on the phone when I, when we confirmed, I talked about there's this new, you know, this new change that's happening, this new agreement. Hey, really quick. I'm just going to go over this really quick. Once again, I'm keeping it simple, right? Our words are powerful. Hey, just going to go over this really quick and I'm going to keep it really simple. We basically have a couple options for, you know, to go over with you. And so there's two different um, touring agreements that we sign. Basically, one of them is we can sign an agreement just for us to 
tour this property together. You know, my compensation is X. And all this means is that, hey, we're going to work together on this one, or we're going to look at this property on this one, and then we're going to decide if we want to work together, right? And so we can do that and just tour this property. Or what a lot of my clients like to do, and this is strategy as well, is we do a 30-day test drive. So we can do a 30-day test drive where we try you know, each other out for 30 days. We can tour a few properties. Let's see how we work well together. And then we go from there, right? Which one do you think would make more sense for you? And so I'm leading that conversation. I'm giving them two options. Hey, do you want to just check this property out? And then we'll reconvene after. Or do you want to just already from the get-go, let's just do a 30-day test drive? Um, Blanca, you've done the 30-day test drive, right? And you, how did that go? How did it go when you presented, uh, let me rephrase the question. How did it go when you presented those options? I know you had one that you signed and everything went well, but what was, give me some feedback on that. It wasn't that I just presented the 30 day. We ha I had built up some rapport to showing value. Mm -hmm. We talked about, they were at the beginning stages. So we talked about the pre-approval process, getting them in touch with the lender, going a little bit into what it entails to about buying a home, their first time home buyer. So they had no clue. Got it. Um, they were hesitant about signing a longer agreement because they didn't know me fully. Mm -hmm. I had already shared my reviews. So they did do some research. So when I said, why don't we do this? Why don't we do a 30 day trial? And I use the analogy of uh, test driving a car or buying a car. And, you know, you take it for a run and you see if you like it. That's kind of what I did. And I said, let's do this for 30 days. I get to know you more. And I can also decide if I'm the right, if you're the right fit for me and I'm the right fit for you. So once I presented it that way and then they were fine, they said, yes, let's go ahead and sign. And then after that, we immediately booked the pre-approval process. With okay, the excellent. So we were really good. There was really no objections. And I think once you give them the option, they feel at ease. But most importantly, is showing your value. Got it. So, so those of you guys, if you're able to hear online, um, just to summarize it, Blanca had built rapport, right? From the first conversation to calling back and confirming the appointment, asking a little bit more questions about where they're at in their process, you know, demonstrated some value. Mm -hmm right? Got to know them a little bit better. So now when she was at the property and she was able to present the two different options and she used the analogy of, Hey, we can check out this one property where you can do a 30 day test drive, similar to like when you test drive a car, right? And we can get to know each other and see if we're a good fit, right? By that time, their guard was down. They saw very minimal risk with you and they saw a lot of potential upside because the amount of value, the energy you brought to the table, what they would potentially get from you was far greater than like, hey, making a 30 day commitment, right? And so that's the thing guys, is we gotta go back to like, if we're showing value and like you're asking for a 30 day test drive process, most people are gonna wanna go for that. It's when they don't see any value from you that they're now they're gonna be hesitant, right? And you may have not a chance, have not had a chance to build rapport with them. And in that, that agreement, Blanca, they could have canceled at any time. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And so the other thing, like, like what you guys said there is the way that we operate, our strategy is to allow a client to cancel anytime. Mm -hmm. Right. And there may be like differences of opinion on this and some other brokerages may treat it a different way. They want to lock people into like an exclusive agreement. We're of the nature that you can sign a non-exclusive agreement and we want to let you out if you want to get let out. Right. And that is a strategy that we've that we've done, right? And I did remind them of that. I said, I want you to work with me because you're excited and you want me to represent you. I said, I do not want you to work with me if you're not excited and happy to work with me. So yeah. And so think of that from a psychological standpoint, right? If this client still doesn't know you and you're asking them to sign an agreement and they can't cancel any time, right? Because a lot of people are using an exclusive agreement immediately like they're going to be hesitant they have to really really think twice you're giving them more things to think about if it's an exclusive agreement where they're locked in right because that's how the typical agreement works you're locked in just like a listing agreement right an exclusive listing agreement you can't cancel unless the agent signs a cancellation right whereas our strategy is you use a non-exclusive agreement and you say hey look at if you want to cancel you can cancel at any time if you're not happy with our service if you don't feel we're a good fit not a problem and so what that does is that immediately puts their guard down and it makes them think like hey i got really nothing to lose right like they're great on the phone 
They brought some value. They prepared a lot of good information. I can cancel any time. Like the risk is very, very low for that client, right? Which is going to lead them to want to move forward and sign more of these agreements with you. And then that's your opportunity as an agent to do what, right? To, to earn their business, yeah. to build value, right? So they want to continue. So it also puts accountability on you as an agent. Yeah. Right? It's like, okay, yeah, I got them signed. Now, now I got to go ahead and perform. Next step. Yeah. So I'm next year. Yeah, and then and what Jason said, guys, those of you guys watching online, is it creates accountability, right? Yeah. It puts the accountability on the agent. Now the agent is responsible for maintaining that level of service, the communication, what they promised to that client, because the client can cancel at any time. And so if you continue to do a good job, the client's not going to want to cancel with you, right? But if you just get them to sign an agreement and then you never stay in touch with them and you're never delivering value, and they go meet some other guy at an open house, they're going to want to cancel with you, right? And so, but isn't that like, if we're trying to build a good business, isn't that how business should be done anyways, right? Where people have options and like everyone has to earn their keep, especially if you're telling the client, hey, I'm charging 2% or 2.5 or 3% or whatever your, your fee is, you want to earn that fee, right? And I use that as part of my sales language. Hey guys, you know, I know this is a big investment. You're investing in me, you're investing in my process in my company, that's why I want you to know if you're not happy with my service or you don't feel I'm living up to our promise, you can cancel anytime and you don't owe me anything. And in fact, I printed out the cancellation guarantee that we use, right? And here you go here, all you gotta do is sign in, you can just take a picture and send it to me, not a problem at all. And then I get back to like, let's focus on why we're here. Hey, is sound fair? I'm gonna say sound fair. Yeah, it sounds fair. Hey, let's go, let's get back to why we're here, guys. Look at this beautiful home, right? So I want to redirect them to why we're here. And I got some great information with you guys. Should we go in? Right? Great. Sign this right here. And so it's, it's those steps, right? Like what I want you guys to understand is it's not just one part of the process that makes this work. It's you stacking all those different pieces of the puzzle, right? From the initial conversation, right? All the way to the end which that client now has had a chance to form an opinion of you, right? Or a perceived, you know, if there's value in you. And then that's going to make their decision a lot easier if you've done this the right way and you've shown how professional you are, you know, and all the value that you're bringing to the table. At the end, it shouldn't be an issue getting them to sign, right? It's when we skip certain steps, right? We take shortcuts, we skip certain steps, and now we have much more of an uphill battle when we're at the front front of the house trying to get them to sign, right? Um, any questions, guys? We're coming up on time now. Any questions before we wrap up? Um, really quick, guys, let me just, those of you guys watching online, if you can do me a favor in the chat, what was one nugget that you took away? One thing that you took away from today's conversation that you can add to your process? Go ahead and just type it in the chat really quick before we wrap up. And uh, those of you guys here, what's one little nugget you took away? What's one piece, one, one thing that stood out in your mind that you can maybe tweak or maybe something that you're doing and you, like, hey, this is why I'm doing that. So ease into it, take it step by step, right? Don't be thirsty is what Antonio said. <laughs> Show them you're prepared, performing confidence. What else, guys? Throw them out there. I like the idea of that we're listing buyers. Yeah. They prepare as if it was a listing presentation. And, you know, prepare like that for your buyer presentation. Prepare as if it's a listing presentation, right? Treat it the same way you treat a listing presentation. Anything else? Don't assume anything. Don't assume anything. Less is more, right? What else, guys? Throw them out there. What was that? Follow the script, follow the script and add value. Um, I got on the chat, guys, uh, just book the appointment, then show value in person, be prepared. Great stuff, Heidel. Saying, always set the appointment, then discuss the deal details in person. Yep, same thing there. Um, buyer agent will help identify serious buyers at an early stage, buyer agreement, right? Juan Castillo, fair enough, and also sign as non-exclusive so they know that you're there to win their business. Yep, that's a... That's a, that's a huge, huge strategy right there, Juan. I like that you pointed that out because remember, that's a business decision that you're making. You can make the decision that I lock buyers into these agreements that they can't get out of. That's one way to run your business, right? 
But are we real? Think about it. If you try to lock someone into agreement and then they want to cancel, right? Or they go sign up with another or buy a house with another agent. Are we in the business of going after buyers for our commission? Like suing people? Like you would have to try to sue them, right? Or you would have to say, no, I'm not letting you cancel. And what kind of, what does that create between you and them, right? Like where they can just easily go and write a bad review about you and all that stuff. So you got to decide, right? And that leads to actually like bad rep for your business, right? And and Blanca, right? <laughs> Blanca just said, who the hell has time for that, right? Like to go like lock people into agreements and like, hey, you owe me this commission. If not, like, like who has time for that, guys, right? We're not in the business of doing that. We're in the business of identifying those clients that want to work with us, bringing a lot of value, being professionals, right? Giving people options and servicing them, right? We're not in the business of like conflict, right? And so it's much better just to like decide from a business strategy that I'm not even going to put that, I'm going to let that be the differentiator, right? That's what's going to make me different from the majority of agents that you're going to go talk to out there. That's a business decision. It's a business strategy. And I promise you, it'll lead to more deals, happier clients, right? Um, and we even do that on our listing agreements, right? Like, hey, you can cancel anytime, right? If you owe me money because I spent a bunch of money, we'll work that out. Not, a, you know, we'll work that out. But if you're just not happy with me and I'm not doing a great job and we're not in contract yet or anything like that, like, who am I to just sit here and hold you to something, right? Yeah, like I'm going to put that energy towards the next client that really wants to work with us. Um, that's all we got today, guys. I hope you guys got some value today. Um, those of you guys watching online, if you guys ever want to book a one on one with me, just free coaching, um, go to meetenrique.com. I'm always there to just give value. Uh, if I can help you anyway, uh, reach out to me and uh, let's go from there, guys. Thank you for showing up today. Let's clap it up.